My name is Patty, and welcome to my four boys in an NL Girl podcast. It is May 30th already. I can't believe it's the end of May. And I am coming to you from the most easterly province in Canada, that of Newfoundland and Labrador. I live on the island of Newfoundland, which is about a six to, depending on the day, six or seven hour ferry ride off the mainland of Canada. I apologize, I have not been be able to get behind the camera, or I guess in front of the camera, and do a podcast for quite some time, so I am back, and uh, hopefully I will be regular, but you can expect me a podcast out every week or two weeks anyway. Um, this podcast is all about knitting, and crocheting, and sewing, and quilting, and rug hooking, and cross-stitching, and painting basically any crafty goodness that I get up to in the run of a week or in the run of a few weeks if I've missed a few weeks podcasting. I'd like to thank you very much for coming and joining me. I hope you take some time to grab a cup of tea and your knitting or crocheting or whatever crafty goodness you're up to and uh, sit down and relax with me for a few minutes. My podcasts don't tend to be very long. They're half an hour or less. Today's podcast is going to be even shorter because our weather has been awful. We have had weeks of rain, drizzle, and fog. And rain, drizzle, and fog does not make it conducive to going out and taping any footage at all about our beautiful province. So I am going to show you a little bit of footage of some icebergs that I took weeks and weeks ago, um, some icebergs that were down in front of our house. And uh, so it's gonna be very short, I apologize for that. I usually have some good footage at the end of the podcast, but today is gonna be short and sweet because of the weather. I guess I could have taken a whole bunch of footage about the fog, but I didn't think that would be very interesting. Though I will try next time to get a little bit of footage about the, uh, when the fog comes in tomorrow because today we are having a beautiful sun splitting the rocks day and it is, it's gorgeous. I unfortunately have been in bed for the past two days. I've been suffering from a migraine that I'm just getting over. I'm still a little sweaty, <laughs> a little um, dizzy, but I'm better. I should be able to go and pick up the boys from school today. My husband's been a godsend. He's been looking after the kids, doing all the cooking, dropping them off at school, picking them up. Um, doing all the things that need to be done with the boys and I've been staggering out of the bedroom around three o'clock to uh, get them snacks and make supper and then stagger back into the bedroom again to go back to bed so it's really been a bit dismal around here for the past two days so if you're a returning viewer I'd like to thank you so much for coming back and joining me here on my podcast and if this is your first time viewing the podcast then welcome I hope you enjoy what you see and if you do for any of you that haven't hit the subscribe button yet then please do so I love to have people subscribe I love to have people comment it may take me ages to get back to you but I will eventually respond to all your comments in time so I love comments and I love having a conversation here on the interwebs um, with uh, fellow crafty um, people so please do so if you get the time um, I do apologize if you hear a little bit of traffic noise uh, we don't get a whole lot of traffic in front of our house but today is such a gorgeous day I've actually opened the windows to let in some fresh air and the cats you probably won't see in this podcast because they're busy being up to the windows looking out wishing that they could be outdoor cats when they're really strictly indoor cats though at this time of year they get a bit of spring fever and they try to escape now I say spring, I'll give you a sense of what our spring, which I've been calling sprinter, has been like. Um, yesterday was two degrees, the day before that was three degrees. Today I think it's over 10, and we haven't made it over 10 yet this spring. This will be around 10 degrees, is as warm as it's gotten. We have had a bit of snow, we had snow last weekend. We had snow the weekend before that, nothing that stayed, but we did have flurries. Um, so, and that is kind of what spring looks like when you're in the Northeast Atlantic. So if you're somewhere a little bit warmer and you're enjoying that, then please count your blessings because we are not having a warm spring here. Uh, though my tulips are up, they've not bloomed yet. Um, so that'll give you a sense about how far behind we are the rest of the world in terms of spring. So I don't know if it's the weather or not, but I've got a couple, I have four finished objects to show you, and they are the most boring of knitting in the world to show you. Um, I have not had a whole lot of knitting mojo. Well, I've had a lot of knitting mojo, but I have found that anything I've picked up recently, I have ruined. <laughs> I've made multiple mistakes I'm getting frustrated with, so I've put all that away for a little while, and I've been knitting 
dishcloths. So I have, these are my four finished objects. I have one, and then I'm not gonna show you each of these. I have three of these completed dishcloths. So it's the general easy brunette um, uh, dishcloth pattern. I will put a link on the screen so you can find it. Very, very simple. Here's my pile, oops. Here's my pile of very nice looking dishcloths. We are getting desperate for new dishcloths, so me having um, knitting dishcloths is not a bad thing. So here they are. There's a nice stack. One of these, uh, one of these ones. Uh, one of my friends. I'm gonna give it to one of my friends because she really liked the color. So I am the proud owner of four dishcloths and those are my finished objects for the week. A little embarrassing, I think, but you know what? That's what I managed to put out over the past couple of weeks. Can you hear the cat yowling in the background? Bella, Bella. Bella wants desperately to get outside. We let them out sometimes in the spring, but what usually happens is our property isn't fenced and it wouldn't matter with cats if it was fenced or not, they would get out and away. And sometimes they cross the road and I am terrified that they're gonna get hit by a car. So what usually happens is we let them out until they keep expanding their territory and then once they expand their territory across the road, then I keep them barred inside again. And I probably won't even try that experiment this year because I don't want them to get hurt. So uh, they're not very happy, unfortunately, at the moment. And I apologize for that if you hear yowling of unhappy cats in the background. Okay, I did want to show you some other works in progress that I have been not knitting on a whole lot, I have to admit, because I've been concentrating on the dishcloths because that seems to be about all my brain can cope with at the moment. But I did start, and I can't remember if I told you about this or not because it's been so long since I podcasted, but I'm pretty sure I told you about this yarn. This is Nora George's. This is some yarn that I've been given in a lovely exchange with a friend of mine, a fiber exchange. It's Nora George's Luxury Hand Dyed Yarn in Fleur de la Cour is the uh, name of the yarn. It's on the Blenheim Sock Base, 50% Superwash Merino and 50% Silk. So I think I had showed you this already, this gorgeous, gorgeous ball that I ruined when I made it into a yarn cake. It didn't turn out that well. I think this is the worst yarn ball I've ever made and it's such a sin with such beautiful, beautiful fiber. But anyway, that's just the way it is. Um, so I started Lisa Much's Auspice Shawl. Uh, it looked like a nice light and airy shawl because with the silk, I wanted this to be more of a summer springtime shawl. So here's what I have knit. Let me start over on this side. So I have this much knit, not really a lot. But you can see how it is knitting. I start. I left a progress keeper down here. Really, you haven't. I haven't showed any of this on the podcast. So, what you see is what you get. But it's knitting up beautifully. I do have a couple mistakes in this. I am trying to decide if I'm going to take it back or keep going. It is a very forgiving shawl, so I may not um, take it back. I keep making mistakes in the eyelet rows, and it's. Um, quite typical for me to make mistakes in eyelet rows. When it comes to lace, I am not the strongest lace knitter and I find eyelet rows and yarn overs mess me up every time. I always end up putting in one less or one too many yarn overs when I do a pattern and uh, so I need to fix that. So this would be one of my area, areas of frustration. This is in my lovely, I can't remember if I showed you this yet or not, but I think I have. My lovely knitting bag from Strand Ireland Designs on Etsy, and I'll put that information on the screen of that. It's got pretty polka dots inside. Perfect um, shawl. Perfect shawl. Actually, you could fit a couple of um, skeins in this bag. It's a good, it's a really nice size. That up there. Okay. Um, those are all the works in progress or finished objects that I have to show you today. As I said, I have not been doing a whole lot. I've either been unwell or really, really busy over the past couple of weeks. So, um, although I do have some exciting news for you, I have two things booked that are coming up over the next um, few months. First of all, on the 8th of June, I'm going to be going to Ontario for a few days. Um, I was 
having the moving itch and the moving itch for me i moved seven times with my parents i moved around newfoundland and labrador and i then moved five times around the world with my husband when he was in the military and we have now been in our house almost seven years i have never lived anywhere longer than six years in my life so seven years is really a new record and i feel like i want to move and I don't want to move, really. I love where we are. I love, my husband loves his job. I'm, we're really content. The kids are all settled and content. I love our house. There's no reason in the world for me to want to move, but I'm getting that itchy feeling that I want to move. So in order to help sway that feeling, um, I've booked a trip to Ontario for a few days by myself. This is my Mother's Day gift. I'm gonna be in Toronto for two nights, three all together, but two nights, um, Thursday and Friday night. I'm then going to go Saturday to Kingston, Ontario to visit friends for a couple nights. And then on the Monday evening, I'm going to be coming back for, I won't really have much time in Toronto. I'll just be coming back for, to catch the plane on Tuesday morning. Um, and I am lucky enough to be meeting up with some podcast friends at, uh, in Toronto on the Friday night. Myself and a whole slew of podcast friends are going to be getting together. So I'm going to be getting together with a bunch of knitters. Yay! On Friday night. And I simply can't wait. These are all ladies that I have admired their podcast for so long and actually having a chance to meet them in person. I'm going to be fangirling all over the place. It's going to be absolutely wonderful and I'm really looking forward to it. So I can't wait. So yay, ladies! I can't wait till we see each other um, next week. Yeah, time is coming up quickly. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is that I have decided to go to the Knitscape Knitting Retreat in Ireland in September. So the weekend of the 22nd of September, I'm going to be meeting up with Catherine and the rest of the Knitscape ladies, or I should say people, because there might be men interested in joining the Knitting Weekend as well. Um, it is the 22nd and 23rd, or that's the 22nd of Friday, so... Anyway, that weekend, around the 22nd of September, I will be in Ireland. And I'm gonna be there a week altogether. I fly, I leave here on a Thursday night and I get back here on a Thursday morning. So I will be there for the knitting retreat and then have two or three days to do, not enough time I realize, um, to tour around Ireland at all. Uh, this will be my third trip to Ireland altogether. I am very lucky that um, my husband and I have traveled fairly extensively, so I have been to Ireland before. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing the area where Knitscape, the Knitscape, Atlantic Knitscape um, Knitting Retreat is held because I haven't been in that part of Ireland before. So that's going to be a hoot and I can't wait to meet all the Knitscape people. So I'm really looking forward to that in September. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is mine and Barbara at the Knitting I Love podcast are Crafty Spring Make Along because it is the 30th of May and that means that our Crafty Spring Make Along will be over tomorrow, the 31st of May. So I won't be closing that until midnight tomorrow night. Well, realistically, it'll be June 1st because I'm not getting up at midnight and closing the uh, and closing that cow. So please, or MCAL, I should say, um, Mal, <laughs> you tell I have a headache? <laughs> Make alarm, Mal. Um, so please, if you haven't entered yet, please get a chance to uh, sit down and enter your projects on Ravelry. I apologize, I've not been on Ravelry for the past week and checked out new projects, so I need to do that. But I certainly will check them all out before um, I close the, the uh, Mal. <laughs> And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the new projects. And thank you so much for joining Barbara and I. It's been an absolute hoot having, hosting this um, knit along. And I can't wait next week when I do my podcast, which I may be doing in Ontario. I'm not sure. But the next time I do my podcast, I will be announcing the winners of the podcast. And I will be showing you all the prizes uh, that the lucky winners are going to get because I'm going to choose a winner from the, um, from the finished object thread and a winner from the chatter thread. So make sure you're involved in both of those threads and you get, and of course, then you go over to Barbara's uh, Ravelry thread and um, join in on hers and then you get triple or quadruple the chance to win a prize, which is just wonderful. So please do that. Before I go, last but not least, I wanted to show you some uh, acquisitions that I have and both of them were gifts. Um, the first one is another opportunity that I had to share with a, a viewer of my podcast, a little fiber package. We had a little fiber swap back and forth and I had sent her her prize and I received my prize from her and I haven't had a chance to show you it yet. I did, if you are on my Instagram feed, you would have seen this, but I want to show it to you in person. So excuse the crinkling. 
So first off, well, let me take the yarn out. Oh, it smells so good because there's soap in here. It's just wonderful. Okay. I got truly spoiled. Absolutely spoiled. So the first thing that she sent me was this lovely, look at the sheep. Look at the gorgeous sheep in the sock bag. And I love it. I don't have a bag like this, so it can I can knit while I'm standing in line. Isn't that wonderful? I love it. And I love, I absolutely love the sheep. I think I like the green ones best. I like the green and the white one because the white one's about to jump on the green one. Reminds me of my boys. They're always about to jump on the other one. That's great. So are those. There's a tiny little I love knitting button. Hopefully the camera will focus on that. So I can put that on this bag or on another bag. There is this beautiful, I'll put this envelope behind it. I'm not sure this is going to show or not on the camera. And as ever, if it doesn't focus, especially when I show you the teapot, if it doesn't focus, I will, if that focuses. If it doesn't focus, I'll put in a picture. I have pictures that I can take from Instagram. In there so there's gorgeous and this is lovely there are a slew there's the teapot progress marker and two four six eight stitch markers that's just wonderful she also get I tell you I got spoiled this bit of lavender rocky rocky mountain soap company I think yep rocky mountain soap company and I love this soap um, because my husband's from British Columbia I actually get this soap on a regular basis and I absolutely love it and it's lavender and it makes this bag smells so good that I may never take it out. I may just keep it in there and let all my yarn smell lovely. There's also this, now somebody had asked me, and I need to get back to her, somebody had asked me on Instagram where this pom-pom came from. There's this huge, oops, huge, huge pom-pom. This is a Bernat Faux Fur pom-pom. So that's where it came from, or that's the brand name of who made it. It's just gorgeous. Look. Look how big that is in comparison to my head. It's huge. It's gonna look so good on her hat. I love it. She sent me a variety of teas. There's an Egyptian licorice and a sunny orange ginger teas. Love them. I haven't drank them yet because I wanted to show you first. Now they're, uh... oh, and the Lady who made the stitch markers, the, the Etsy shop is Yarn Candy Studio, and I will put that, I will put that information on the screen as well in case this doesn't focus on that. But that was for the stitch markers with the teapot, stitch markers, and the gorgeous little stitch marker um, uh, kit. Then there's this little mini of handmade and flaxen, 65% linen, 35% silk. I am where's that envelope gone? Use that envelope again so you can focus on that. Aren't those colors gorgeous? I just love them. I need to make up some minis so I can give them away too because I don't have any minis. Then there is this, see if I say this right, Little Pies Magical Yarn Orium. It's like a yarn, a porium, but it's a yarn orium. So, Hiloris. Little Pie's Magical Yarnorium. I'm sorry, I'm distracted by the cat. She's chewing on one of her toys right by my foot. This is a sock set, a matrix sock kit. Colorway is Hen and Chicks. And look, can you see, hopefully you, the camera will focus on that gorgeous gradient. I've never seen a gradient in a sock kit before. And I'm just thrilled with this. I can't wait to cast this on. It's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. There's 420 yards here, so I could even use this for a shawl. That is amazing. Beautiful. Um, I will put this shop's information on the screen as well. So that's just gorgeous. And then the other one is from Flock Fiber Studios, Wanderlust BFL. And I have been wanting some flock, something from Flock Fiber um, Studios or ages. This is made in Canada. It's 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon, 405 yards. 
And this is a fingering weight, and the colorway is Sunset Soon Forgotten. And it's just, ooh, hello, Angel. Just beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So as you can see, I was totally and thoroughly spoiled by that yarn swap. Thank you so much. I'm not going to say your name. <laughs> you know who you are. But thank you so much for that gorgeous package. It, I was absolutely thrilled when I uh, received it. It absolutely made my day. And I know you're a bit worried about postage, but postage, if anybody ever sends anything to me here in Newfoundland and Labrador, Labrador, it always takes a little longer than you expect. And here's another example of that. This is a sweet little parcel that I received without, I wasn't expecting this. This was an absolute and total surprise. I had sent out a prize for the last, um, the last make-along, was it the make-along? Yeah, I think it was the last make-along prize that I sent out. Or it was for the potiversary. I can't remember. Anyway, I had sent a prize out to a lovely lady. And lo and behold, she decided that she would send me some things back, which I wasn't expecting. So, again, excuse the crinkling. But um, she's so sweet. She, she said, thank you for her prize and for sharing my yarn adventures with you. So you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. I wasn't expecting to send her a prize and they got something back. So look at this darling pri a little package she put together. There was a barrel uh, puzzle, and I have to say, I am terrible at these, but my boys have done this. Let's see, my husband's done it twice, but my eldest has done this three or four times. He's thrilled. So thank you so much for this. This has been a wonderful family, family time toy. A... Lion Brand Yarns measuring tape. You can never have too many of these, can you? A cute little button that says All Wand ID. Information will be kept confidential from the Fantastic Beasts movie. I love that. I'm a Potterhead, so that uh, suits another, and that's another button to put on my bag. Yay! But, and last but not least, and what I was most excited about, is she sent me all look at all these gorgeous little minis. Look at them. Green and orange. Purple, peach, <laughs> peach and pink. I'm not sure if the camera's even focusing on these. Beautiful deep blues and purples. Blue. Pink. There, I think I got, oh, no, missed one and violets and mauves, just gorgeous. I'm not gonna say your name either. I'll just say R, thank you so much for that beautiful uh, package. Uh, thank you, Gift, for receiving your prize. I really appreciate it. That was so sweet of you. And certainly not something that I was expecting. So that was a great mail day when I opened up the mailbox and there was a little parcel and the boys were saying, who's it for, Mommy? And I was saying, it's for me, but I don't remember ordering anything. <laughs> so that was great. I have to go and pick up my boys from school now, so I need to say goodbye on this lovely podcast on this beautiful day. I'm so glad I've had a chance to sit down and podcast and share some information with you because I really, when I don't podcast regularly, I um, feel like I haven't spoken to all my girlfriends and boyfriends, all my great friends out there in the world. So thank you so much for taking time to sit down and watch my podcast with me. I hope you had to, at least enough time for a cup of tea. And I look forward to chatting with you again soon. I hope you have time to delve into some wonderful crafty goodness this week. Take care. Bye-bye.